So I've been a journalist for 12 years now, and I'm constantly asked, why do you actually care uh, why, how extremists build communities? Why does that actually matter? And the reason that it matters is because extremists use the same tactics to grow communities that other platforms use on you every single day. So it's really important to figure out how people are manipulating your emotional touch points to figure out, A, how you can stay away from extremist groups, but also B, how you can figure out how people like Facebook are also manipulating you. So the first thing to think about is what the hell actually is a community? And there's lots of different types. There's communities of practice, of circumstance, of action. But communities grow either by shared hatred or shared passion. Those are the two ways that they connect with you. And everyone wants to look for a tribe. And every method of identification for a community is something we already sort of know inside. You know when you see someone across the bar and you're like, that person is totally my shit. Because you know by their dialect or a word that they use or something that they wore that that's one of your people. That's someone from your tribe. Well, unfortunately, extremist groups do the same thing. And they're very, very good at it. Uh, in fact, when you think about one like ISIS, they've actually written an entire guide for their fighters on how to act in communities and on social media to manipulate people into joining their group. That's how good they are with this. So we're going to talk about three ways that they do this. The first is that they're not just looking for people that are interesting, they're looking for vulnerable people. They're looking for people who are hungry for a tribe, for some kind of family, and they manipulate that to create a bond with them, to say, you know what, I'm not so bad, let's be friends. I feel the same way you do, I'm also lonely. Can we maybe talk about this movie you like, or can we talk about a song that we both like? And that's how they build a bond. The second thing they do that's extremely effective that ISIS started and that we've all seen carry on with the 2016 election is to pretend that their group is bigger than they actually are. They've totally taken over Twitter hashtags that have nothing to do with their group. Things like the word New York or cake or kittens. Uh, and you'll actually see that ISIS in many times puts pictures of their, their fighters holding kittens or taking barbecues. In fact, they have a hashtag against Al-Qaeda for, for who can have the best picnic. And this is all to make them look like a fuzzy, happy community so that you want to join them. The last thing that they do that's extremely effective in creating lone wolf community members is to publish all of this. So I think everyone's familiar with the Boston bombing marathon suspects. They actually learned how to build a pressure cooker bomber by reading ISIS forums. And that's because ISIS and other extremist groups know that media weapons are more potent than atomic bombs. And by building a larger community, they create a digital caliphate that can be even more potent than having people in real life next to them. Uh, so this is something that's happened forever, right? We've seen this happen for our entire lives. The scary thing is that it doesn't just happen in evil, scary ways that we see on the front page of the newspaper. This happens to us every single day in more benign ways that we don't even think about. And of course, Facebook is just the most blatant, but this happens pretty much in everything that we do. Facebook has been in the news quite recently because we know now that everything that they put up from their notifications to where the messenger button is to what they show in your feed is designed to make you take an action. It's designed to make you click something. It's designed to make you share something, to add someone to a group, to put something on your page. And that's, of course, because it all equals their bottom line. So by manipulating your community and your emotional touch points, Facebook makes millions of dollars off of all of us every single day. Of course, we're pretty much powerless to this because we still use it because everyone is already there. But it's not just Facebook, right? multi-schemed uh, marketing schemes use your communities to sell things that they make money and your poor friends don't. Uh, grocery stores use your personal data to make sweeping generalizations about your communities. And of course, the biggest one, the government. Flexes cultural boundaries to figure out how they can benefit their own districts and their own dollar and their own bottom line. So these are things that happen to us every single day and they're all using the same community management techniques and the same touch points. And sometimes this also happens uh, for good reasons as well, not just horrible reasons. Sometimes your emotional touch points are manipulated to uh, make you do some good in the world. <laughs> Still pretty evil, I think, too. <laughs> and 
even though this all seems pretty bleak, the good news is that the more you realize how your emotional touch points and your bonds and your community touch points are being used, the more control that you can take back over it, the more you can see how you are being manipulated, uh, and try to take back a little bit more of that awareness in your own life. Thank you. Woo!